Kayla Clark. I'm a naturopathic doctor, originally from Vancouver, Canada, currently in Austin, Texas. I went through topical steroid withdrawal myself. After having eczema most of my young adult life, I started TSW in 2016. It took me about eight months to move through, and since then, my skin has been great. It's been completely different. I never thought I would be able to go somewhere without uh, steroid cream or any cream in general, worrying about what was going to happen, but here I am. And now as a naturopathic doctor, I am so passionate about helping other skin warriors do the same and rebalance their health from an inside out perspective so they don't have to worry about it. In this video, I'm going to share my personal story with eczema and topical steroid withdrawal. I'm going to go through how it started, um, the signs and symptoms of things I experienced, and also what I did. So I was in the middle of naturopathic medical school at the time, which is a blessing and a curse, very high stress, but also I was exposed to a ton of different doctors, different ideas, different pro practical pro modalities and practices, and so I learned a ton. So I want to share some of that with you. I'll talk about what worked and what didn't, and then I'm going to share what life is like now and how I incorporate what I learned into my treatment protocols and my program when I work with other people who are going through this. So if you are curious to learn more about my story, I am glad to have you here. Like I was saying, I have had eczema my entire life since an infant, as far as I can remember. It was more, mostly in the same common places that many people experience it, so mostly here in the flexors of my arms, and a little bit in my neck, uh, on my eyelids, nothing crazy. I, would, I was given steroid creams, and then I used them I used them throughout my whole childhood uh, because no one ever told me not to. I do remember my skin was quite bad at one point. I remember looking in the bathroom mirror, just slathering my neck in like pretty high potency steroids and Elodel and some natural creams. Yes, all at the same time because again, I didn't know any different and I was just so desperate. And I remember looking in the mirror and thinking like, this is going to come back and bite my ass one day. Um, I thought that in my PG little child version way, but, but I felt like it was at that moment I intuitively knew that something was going to happen. I don't know if that was like that moment that I became addicted, but I knew. So fast forward, you know, my, uh, my skin was okay. I was using the steroid creams. It was fine. And then I was in naturopathic medical school. Uh, and it was being managed with the creams. It just, it's ironic, I recognize the irony of that, being in a profession that talks about root cause medicine, foundations, and not suppressing. Here I am as a student of that medicine, literally suppressing my eczema, but also um, a, a student of this world, realizing that it's stressful, um, everything is stressful, I'd rather just suppress. I just don't want to deal with it. And so that's what I was doing. Um, until the end of my second year when we had a really stressful exam to move into clinic and that is when topical steroid withdrawal started. That is what set me off and um, when I realized something needed to change, it wasn't really a choice at the time, my body made the choice for me. But what happened was, uh, I should say at the time, I had tried to stop steroid cream a couple times by then and every time I would stop, my skin would flare like crazy and it was terrible and it was worse than anything I had experienced at the time. Now looking back, I know that it was the beginning beginning of TSW, but at the time I just thought it was my eczema getting worse and so I always went back to the steroid creams. Eventually at the end of my second year, we had a really stressful exam and that is what set my body off and that was what started the process in full. So the skin that was already really angry in the regular eczema spots, so we, I started to get um, these numular, which is a fancy way of saying really round, perfectly round spots that started moving down my arms on both sides. And it started to spread from my neck up to my face. On the back of my neck, I would get like uh, staph infections, folliculitis on the back of my neck. It started to move onto my chest, um, onto my stomach, onto my abdomen. Uh, for me, it never went, it kind of went onto my lower legs, but it, they were fine. It was mostly on my upper body. And eventually it started going, it started coalescing and I got the full red sleeves. Um, I was just literally fully red my entire, my entire upper body. And I, uh, at that time when that started happening, it was Christmas vacation. And so I went to the ER, I went to many different doctors, whoever was open and nobody knew what was happening to me. And I was a student of medicine. It doesn't matter if you're a student or not, but uh, all I did was sit at home Googling like, what the heck is happening to me? I had no idea. It felt so different. And I'm sure if you have been through TSW, um, you, you can relate that it just feels extremely different. So for me, um, it started off, and this is common to many of my patients, but not always does it happen in this way. So this is, again, personally, just my, my story. Um, for me, it started off really hot and red. It was just like that really crazy flare. Um, I couldn't sleep at all. I had insane night sweats. I was oozing. I started to ooze. Um, I had this really foul smell. Um, I stopped producing, I stopped sweating, and I stopped producing, I guess, regular body odor, but was replaced with this oozy metallic kind of smell. Um, again, if you've 
had this, then, then you know what I'm talking about here. But yeah, so that is how it sort of started and then it progressed into cycles. So I started moving through cycles where it would be really hot, red, itchy. The itch uh, is very typical of the TSW itch many of you talk about is that bone deep itch that just cannot be satiated. Like I, I just couldn't sleep, I would lie in bed miserable, sweating and cold and chills and so itchy and flaking and stuck to my pillow um, or I'd be in the bathtub. So I, when you all tell me your stories, I completely, I completely resonate too. I, I remember those days, I had the gloves, all of it. And so, um, yeah, it just, it started cycling and I would move through these flakes. I swear I would remember wondering how many layers of my skin am I shedding every single day? It had to be like an entire skin suit every single day, like in my apartment at the time. My partner had to do the dishes every single day and bless his heart that he did. That was a very Southern thing of me to say, bless his heart. But um, I am really, truly grateful for, for the care that I was given during that time. So yes, eventually the, uh, how it ended, and I'll kind of just talk through this in layers, but how it ended was it cycled like that for about eight months. The cycles started to get shorter and shorter and shorter um, as time went on. And then eventually it just started to clear up. And by eight months, nine months later, it was completely back to normal. So what did I do? That timeline, um, I, I should also say that timeline doesn't mean anything. It could, it could have just like, I could not have done any of this stuff and maybe I would have been done by eight months, but I strongly believe that all of the things that I did helped speed up my healing process. I was really kind to my body um, at the end of it. <clears throat> at the beginning, it was really intense. So, you know, everybody's different. Everybody's going to react differently. Everybody has a different root cause going on. So I strongly encourage you to always work with someone to get an idea and recognize that my story might be completely different from yours. I am just sharing what, what I did and what helped me. <clears throat> so, as I was saying, I was in the middle of my second year of naturopathic medical school when it started to go down. It was a blessing and a curse because I was able to try a whole bunch of different things. The first thing that I did and that a lot of people do is go after the diet. And I strongly think that this is just because we it's something that we can control and it's something that we know will benefit our bodies. But uh, there's a flip side with the TSW. And so I did what I see a lot of people do is do an extreme elimination diet right off the bat, right? So I cut out gluten, dairy, sugar, alcohol, wheat, egg, like all of the good, all of the good things and all of the things that I was eating um, because I thought that it was inflaming my gut. The reality is, yes, it was inflaming my gut, but at the time, cutting all of that stuff out wasn't actually then allowing me to get enough nutrients in. And because my gut was so leaky at the time anyways, because just the nature of TSW, <clears throat> It wasn't exactly the best time to do that. So looking back, if I were, and when I do work with patients, I'll, we'll do gut healing a little bit later on in the process, not right at the beginning, not the best idea, not the most effective time. That being said, uh, cutting out things like excessive alcohol, sugar, dairy, wheat, all of that stuff is great, but not being really strict and, and regimented about it. I just don't find that that is a conducive strategy right off the bat. But I'm going to make a video about the actualities of treating TSW and what's going on. Um, this is just a story. So moving on to that um, diet, I eventually learned to how to eat intuitively and really listen and tune into what my body was craving, uh, which allowed me to be less restrictive. I didn't feel like I had to follow a certain diet. I felt like I was able to, to understand what my body was doing. And so this is a huge piece of the work that I do with people and that I suggest they do to learn how to eat with themselves. There's a whole lot of diet information out there anyways. Um, I did a whole bunch of testing. So I tested my food sensitivities. I did a stool test. I did a parasite test. I did a gut health test. Um, I did a, a hormone test, a cortisol test, a detox test, a genetics test. Uh, if I forgot to list any of them, I probably did them. I did all of them. What this taught me was, I mean, I was gener generally healthy. I didn't have anything, any red flags that showed up that would, that matched the uh, ex extremeness of the situation. And so Again, testing is something I will utilize with people sometimes, but it doesn't always give us an answer or a clue. I did all of the tests and I had no answers. Um, I did the really strict elimination diet and nothing really changed. And supplements, so I'll talk about supplements again. I took a shit ton of supplements because I was, I had access to all of them. And so I tried a lot of things. Again, why I say it was harsh to my body at the beginning because I was trying too much. I was doing too many things. 
um, the strict diet combined with the high stress that suddenly came on, combined with the fact that I didn't take any time off school to rest, I just went full steam ahead and put gloves on and hope nobody looked at me. Um, and I took a ton of supplements that probably weren't necessary for my body at the time and, and weren't really doing anything great or doing anything that would help. So again, at the beginning, a lot of supplements, and then I ended up starting to work with someone and to better understand what was happening and to better just trust the treatment plan. Uh, at the end, I ended up taking only a few supplements very intentionally and more longer term, less desperately. And um, I mean, I'll, I guess I can talk about what those were. For me, I was they were mostly basic things. So a trace mineral, um, a fish oil, activated bees, a, a, and then a few other things that were specific for my body. But uh, yeah, it was it's nothing intense now. Um, and then practices. What else I did is I did acupuncture. Again, I had access to acupuncture. We learned it in school, so I had, would let my students' classmate classmates practice on me. And so I was getting acupuncture twice a week. Uh, I recognize not everybody is able to do that, but I do think that that was a big big effect. It had an effect in my skin and how I was healing. Uh, I also should mention, maybe, I took those Chinese teas, the herbal teas, I, I actually, I guess I definitely should, um, for a good chunk of time, for about six months, I took, took the teas, I would brew them every day, they tasted like garbage, but um, I think they had bugs in them, but I took them. Did I find them that they, did I find that it was extremely helpful? P perhaps, again, I didn't notice anything right away, but that's the tough thing with TSW and eczema, is they are slow progressing condition so something that we are trying today might not actually affect it have an effect until three or four or five months later which is why uh, the supplement shopping is not always a, an option it's, not, it's actually never a great option but especially not in this case okay what was more most helpful honestly for me was um, a practice called hydrotherapy which is literally just use, using water to sort of gently stimulate your immune system and your body so it's a very gentle practice but a very powerful practice Cold water therapy is quite uh, trendy nowadays, which is amazing because it's so powerful. But um, what I, how I would do it is I would go into the clinic at school, and it's an old school naturopathic way of doing this practice. But how you can do it at home, or how I would do it at home, is at the end of my shower, just ending with a cold blast, if that's possible. If you're in the shower with CSW, I recognize that that might not, that might not be happening. Um, but even just doing alternating hot colds on your wrists or on your feet, this is like a microcosm so it can stimulate your whole body. And there's a whole science behind it. I'll make another video on it one day. I'm making myself a long list of videos to make, but um, there's a whole science behind hydrotherapy and what it's actually doing in the body. I personally found it extremely helpful for my skin. Still to this day, my skin loves hydrotherapy. Um, nervous system work was also one of the, the key things I found was most helpful. So just dealing with stress, anxiety, uh, and prone to anxiety in general, obviously TSW, I shouldn't say obviously, but most likely TSW is going to make that worse. So I was also in med school, I had high stress, and so this cycle was, was just going on and on and on and on. So for me, nervous system and stress support was key and was absolutely beneficial to my skin and just life healing in general, but I do think it was one of the most important factors that helped me heal my skin. And the other thing that was most helpful for me was finding a doctor and a guide that I just trusted and to, to lead me through it. So even though I probably was the most qualified and knowledgeable person at the time, um, you know, I was almost a doctor, right? I still could not be my own doctor and I could try to do all of the things, but being in such a fragile, vulnerable state um, and a desperate state, I just, it didn't, I was not my best doctor. And again, recognizing that not everyone has access to the care that I did. I am hoping to change that. That is exactly what I'm hoping to change. And I'm seeing more and more TSW aware doctors and coaches pop up, which is beautiful. And I was very benefited to be able to have someone support me. And what they did for me was create a plan that uh, I contributed to, I guided with, I put input on. And once we created that, I trusted it. And this person, every time we met, would ask me, would augment things as needed, um, would, would tell me what they think my system was doing now, and help me through that process, give me confidence. Again, they hadn't even been through DSW, so it was a huge leap for just my own trust in myself and my body and healing. Um, a big thing, a big privilege that I was able to do was go to Hawaii partway through and um, that was a turning point. I don't know if it was the sun, the sand, the, the healing vibes of uh, Hawaii or the anti-stress or something. But personally for me, that was, I feel like, the point where um, I just felt more empowered to heal. I trusted myself more after that. That's not very scientific, but that's, 
that's what happened. So, um, yes, those were some of the things that were most helpful for me. That is what I did. That was my experience recognizing and being honest with the fact that I had a lot of gifts come to me when I was going through TSW and I'm extremely grateful for that. Which brings me to the next point is why I want to be able to help other people who are going through this because I know what it was like um, and I can't imagine now. Yeah. It's been about five years since my skin has been clear from TSW. I haven't had eczema since. Well, that's not true completely. Um, so now that I've gotten later on in my healing, I was able to actually do an elimination diet and identify my food sensitivities properly when my immune system had been calmed down a little bit. And so I learned which foods I'm sensitive to. Dairy, go figure. Soy, go figure. Sugar, obvious. Um, alcohol, I mean, that's just inflammatory in general. So if I indulge and I have these things and I have too much of them, I will get a little bit of eczema on my elbows here and a little bit on my neck. It is absolutely manageable without steroids and I actually think my body when this happens because it's a sign that uh, my gut's getting a little bit angry and you know it's just a consequence and I don't do this often but if I do if I do indulge I'm making a conscious decision too because I know that it's going to um, affect my body and that's my sacred vessel and I want to be conscious in the decisions that I'm making so that's where I sit with my skin um, I, it's great, TSW is going, I have not touched a steroid, do not want to touch a steroid, and now I treat people who are going through TSW and eczema and I help them balance their skin from an inside out approach, which affects not only their skin, but their health in general. Don't want to go down the steroid route, I don't want you to have to experience TSW like I did, I want you to, if you are going through it, I want you to feel confident and comfort in your body, I want you to feel clarity in your healing, and I want you to feel comfort in your skin. And so I have created a approach that really addresses all of the pillars that I think you need to, or a person needs to be healthy in body, mind, soul, and skin. Here is my approach. The first one is identifying the root cause. So I think this is so key when it comes to eczema, especially and TSW, is figuring out why it happened in the first place. Sometimes it's genetic, sometimes it's a gut health issue, sometimes it's a imbalanced immune system, hormones, detox pathways, overloaded, could be a combination of different things. It's different for everybody, but once we understand what's actually going on in the body, then we can make an actionable approach to healing it, which is the step two, is rebalancing the foundational health systems. So after we find the root cause, we rebalance the foundational health systems, whether this be gut, detox, hormones, all of that stuff you're talking about, this is gonna be a key approach. The third is balancing the nervous system. Again, nervous system regulation is so key. I've talked a lot about how our nervous system and our gut are connected. And once we learn how to trust our body, our nervous system will calm down, move out of the state of fight or flight or freeze, uh, and better be able to heal your skin and your body. So this is key in all of my approaches. And the fourth one is connection, community, confidence. And so this is more of an esoteric approach, but it's something that I include in my protocols. I want you to feel safe, connected, um, and part of a community of other skincare warriors who are going through the same thing. I think there is huge medicine and just connecting in solidarity. So this is something I include also. I am really blessed and privileged, you know, looking back on this story, it sucked. It really did. Um, I wouldn't wish it on anyone, but it happened and I grew so much as a person because of it. And I hope to be able to help you through this so you can do the same and whatever that looks like in your life. If you have any questions or would like to connect, please send me an email. Please follow this channel, comment if you have anything, and I would, I will connect with you soon. I hope you have a beautiful day.